Soraya. Hey, Jeff. So was it a couple weeks ago that we did our focus on 16 tambourines? Yes, we did. Yeah, and some things came out of that. Some, I think Danny Benair might have listened to that episode, right? I have a feeling because he says he's got answers for us. So we're going to have to do a follow up to that episode. 100%. But if anything, it shows that revisiting some of these classic albums is important because we learn more about them now. Yes. And today, I think we've picked a pretty fantastic album to focus on. What is it, Jeff? So today we're talking about Rain Parade's Emergency Third Rail Power Trip. I've got to say it slow, sorry. <laughs> Now, I saw you hold up that beautiful album. How many signatures do you have on it? So I have Matt's and Steven's in the balloon right here. So um, unfortunately, two of the members are no longer with us, yes. with Will Glenn and David Roback being gone. Um, and I did not have opportunity to have them sign this before their departure from this plane. And um, I've got a lot of space for Eddie Kawa, who we've talked to, and I might mention is one of the most beautiful human beings that I know, man. That guy's got a great heart. So spectacular so, person. Eddie, I right think here. You'd have to go on a very northward yes. uh, road trip to the Great White North. And <laughs> oh my gosh, to the beautiful Canadian space. Yes. He's, He's the one and only. But yes. we digress. Yes. And to Eddie. We send lots of good vibes because he's a great guy. All right, Jeff, let's get started. Hi, this is Soraya. And this is Jeff. Our podcast is called Paisley Stage Raspberry and Rhyme. A podcast where the two of us play music that we like and share anecdotes and background about the tune. We hope you'll join our conversation. And without further ado, agrubiar. Let's get groovy. 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 Okay, so emergency third rail power trip. I definitely think, Jeff, our listeners can say we have nothing but love for Rain Parade. <laughs> yeah. We've got a lot of respect and love for Rain Parade. So, Jeff, what? why is this album included in this focus? Well, besides being a fantastic album, I think it's an, it's one of those albums that are just key to the Paisley Underground movement. Um, we've talked about 16 Tambourines, the Bengals EP, um, Days of Wine and Roses by Dream Syndicate. Um, this is definitely one of those that are absolutely key. And um, as you'll see later as we get into our discussion, I'm following your lead on this one in that um, you like to do, in, in your research, you like to look at some of the comments on YouTube to find right. stuff. And um I did a little bit of that this week in my research, and uh, we'll get to that later. But a lot of the comments um, were to that fact that this album is is one of the the greatest Paisley Underground albums, and I think that goes without saying. So we have to dig into this a little bit more. Than oh yeah. We have. Um. So I wanted to just kind of put a little context. So. Um, in just kind of doing a little bit of research and we can talk about the details of release and everything in a minute, but just to kind of give it a little bit of an overview. So this is a quote um, from a book from 2003 called Turn On Your Mind. Turn On Your Mind, Four Decades of Great Psychedelic Rock. Oh. And so the, the critic Jim De Rogatis. Oh, yes. Okay, wrote the following quote. Emergency Third Rail Power Trip is not only the best album from any of the Paisley Underground bands, it ranks with the best psychedelic rock efforts from any era. And he added, songs such as What She's Done to Your Mind, Kaleidoscope, and Look at Mary showcase Pucci and the Robacks, ethereal vocals, Eddie Calva's precise drumming, Matt Pucci's colorful sitar, Will Glenn's violin and keyboard accents, and an intricate chiming badroni two guitar attack that picks up where the birds left off with eight miles high. Nice. Uh, that's a lot of the, some of those things you and I have said before in previous 
um, episodes. Uh, I mean, not with the same words, but like, I like to talk about how the vocals are very dreamy and, you know, kind of otherworldly. Um, we've talked with Eddie Cowell and talked about his drumming. And I mean, there's nothing I don't like about this album. Same. Yeah. And I think it's because of some of the things that this, that Jim Derogatis mentioned, some of the things that you and I have noted over time. This is a really unique album. Okay, so let's talk about the details. When was it released? Okay, so 1983 on Enigma. Um, it was when the original pressing came out, this pressing here, yeah. um, which included nine songs. Um, it was recorded at Contour Studios in Los Angeles, February to March of 83, and came out that same year. So it's one of those things where they recorded it and came out pretty quickly. Um, a couple of songs, Saturday's Asylum and Kaleidoscope, were recorded at Radio Tokyo. So we had talked about that on our Radio oh, Tokyo yeah. compilation episode. The most important album of my life, by the way. Um, so th those were the details. But then later, it was also released in the UK, the year later, um, on Zippo Records. Right. So this... Jeff the thing. Completest. Yeah. So, <laughs> which is a game. Oh, my gosh. Look at that beauty. Yeah. So... The American pressing is not a gatefold, but the Zippo version uh, came out a year later and um, added Look Both Ways, which made it a 10, sorry, made it a 10 album track at that point. So the original, which is really what we're discussing today, had nine songs, but um, so that was that. And then um, it was also released by Real Gun in 2019. And look at this, Soraya. So, uh, I mean, can it get more beautiful than that? Yeah. So for those who are listening, it's a yellow and orange swirl vinyl version. Beautiful. So Frank Dragato, are you watching? Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> are so you saying it because you're trying to make him jealous that you no, have it? No, he probably has it too. Or he, he has it in his collection. You're just <laughs> saying, I got mine too. Yeah. Got yeah. He loves colored vinyl. So, so. Um, and then also um, there's CD version. So um, the original on Restless. And Sarai, did you want to talk a little bit about this one? Um, so um, a couple of years ago, it was uh, remastered by the one and only Jim Hill, who yes. we had on the show and um, Great guy. who has such a long uh, relationship with the band. Um, but it's the sound is beautiful on this remaster. And I remember when we when we um, took the road trip up to what was it on the episode or was it in person that Matt Pucci said, oh no, you gotta listen to the remaster because yeah. the sound is is how we envisioned it. Um, and it's just really and it's a, a beautiful listen. But but Jeff and I attest to it. It's the remaster by Jim Hill. It, um, of a, just a couple of years ago. So it's yeah. easily and readily available. Yes, on CD, um, yep. Yeah, on CD, sorry, um, is really good. And so I think we should note, while we're talking about and using the track listing from the original 83 release, the audio is from the remaster. So yeah. you can't fault us for, I mean, <laughs> we just wanted to be transparent. <laughs> yeah, so what you're hearing today on our tracks will be the Jim Hill remastered version. Right. Which are pristine and amazing. Yeah, and if you don't have this remaster, you should have it. Yes. It's, it's really well done and beautiful. I have to say, it's probably the definitive version out of everything that I have. So the, the new vinyl, which looks amazing, is from the original pressing, I believe. So um, the sound on the CD is, um, is probably the best that you're going to have. So, right. um, so Ronnie Barnett, the CD man, <laughs> we like to go back and forth because I like to say vinyl is the way to go. And, um, <clears throat> and I, I kind of misquote him because he says uh, good things about, there's good things about CDs too, but I like to give him a hard time that he thinks that CDs are superior, but he never said that. But <laughs> <laughs> anyways, so Soraya, earlier we were talking about some YouTube comments and um, there were some comments about emergency third rail power trip that um, were kind of funny because uh, I saw several that said that this album is definitely a link to the 1960s. You can definitely hear the 1960s and probably an equal amount of comments 
that said that this album was way ahead of its time in the soft ethereal feel that it had that became that's pretty much bigger now right uh, than it has ever been so it's funny that some people talk about how it's a link to the past and some people talk about that it's way ahead of its time in the future so to me that spells timelessness so right this is one of those albums that I think are just really timeless it definitely has um its feet in in the 60s for sure Mm -hmm. but it's one of those timeless albums where as if you would say like the three o'clocks ever after is definitely something that is a product of its time right Right. production whereas this one I feel it's it's just timelessness the songs are just timeless so I but agree. yeah, it's funny reading those comments, how you have some referring to the past and some referring to the future. And to me, that just spells timelessness. So. Well, and I think that pretty much encapsulates what Rain Parade is, is, and especially now, I think I, I hear this album differently now because I know there are new songs coming, you know, it's weird to think of it like that. Yeah. Um, or at least those are the videos that we've been seeing. We've seen, you know, and uh, if you follow Matt Pucci, if you follow Stephen Roback, if you follow Derek C, you know, we've had little glimpses of uh, the band getting together and laying down tracks. Um, but it's just, it, I think that really kind of encapsulates what the band is. They're really kind of timeless and they move in a space that's musically really their own. And you start to hear a lot of different influences from different different things and I think that's what's really inventive about this album is no two tracks follow the same pacing follow the same arranging it I mean they're all different and you hear so many different influences really kind of congregate into one it's really it's it's really a fresh listen indeed yeah and yet it's still cohesive right Mm -hmm. I mean there is I totally agree with you 100 percent Yet it's still, as a whole, I'm an album person. It it is. Sorry, my my cat agreed. My, my cat <laughs> was agreeing. The three of us are all all, all on board. We're all we're <laughs> interspecies agreement. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Sorry, so I'm no. just so it it all just fits together as a whole. So. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, what? Well, and we've already talked about the lineup, which, uh, for this album. It does include Matt Pucci, Stephen Roback, David Roback, and Will Glenn, and Eddie Kawa. Sorry. Yes. Yep. Okay. So, Jeff, I want you to go first. <laughs> and I'm wondering if you're going to do what I think you're going to do. You probably know me way too well, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I am starting off with the leadoff track. Talk Boom. About so, we're starting off side one, track one. <laughs> yes, yes. Right from the beginning. So. All right. I I could say all the normal things. I just love the song, the guitar, the bass in this is incredible. Steven Roback is the bass in this is just amazing. Um, the drums are great, the vocals are great, the guitars are all great. Um, but the reason why I picked this, I I wish I could put into words the feeling that I have right from the beginning. So as the song, there's a guitar that slides up down now, right away, like those two two notes. There's just something that just just fills me with excitement. Um, there's nostalgia. I feel hope. I don't know, just that guitar part. Um, we've mentioned it before. Matt Pucci has talked about what a big influence television, the band television was. Um, I hear that in this guitar part, but just the feeling that I get. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it, but there, just those two notes alone, every time I hear this album, and I've heard this album hundreds of times, it just fills me with just such good vibes, um, just the music and then everything about the song. I think this is a perfect song. It's a great lead off track. Um, back to uh, my copying you with the YouTube comments. Sure. Uh, when I was looking at this video, uh, talking in my sleep on YouTube, one of the comments said, and I don't agree with this at all, but I love the comment nonetheless. It was by somebody named Dewey Pug. So Dewey Pug writes, if R.E.M.'s Murmur and Beatles Revolver had a baby, talking in my sleep. So I don't agree with that at all. I don't hear R.E.M. in this. I don't hear the Beatles in this necessarily. Maybe a little bit, 
But um, those are two of my absolute favorite albums, like way at the top, Murmur and Revolver are just great to me. So I don't necessarily agree with that, but I love the comment nonetheless. And people agreed with it. So who am I to say otherwise? But I just love the comment nonetheless. And then a little bit about the lyrics that I wanted to mention that I'll reference later um, with my second song. But um, I heard a knocking at the door. I crawled across the floor and tried to let you in but you were gone before. I could turn a key and almost certainly. So um, there's something about that um, that just, just touches me a lot. So um, there's this knocking at the door, you go there and then they're gone already. So it feels like the way that life is sometimes, like yes. there's an opportunity and by the time you're there, that opportunity has gone. But um, the part, the phrase I could turn a key um, keep that in your mind when, we, when I get to my second song. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, um, right off the bat, um, for our listeners, listen to this bass. Steven Roback is amazing on this bass. The guitars are great. I say we start off with the lead off track. Here's Talking in My Sleep.
great song. It is. And I should mention that it's written by David Robeck and Matt Pucci. And uh, it sounds like to me that they're doing a duet vocals on that. So, um, man, that song is amazing. And what a great lead off track. I mean, I, and I think I, I can echo what you said about how you feel with that first strum, right? Mm-hmm. It just something plugs in and you're like, okay, I'm along for the ride. Really good lyrics. I like the arrangement of this song a lot. And we get a lot of different elements kind of thrown at us really seamlessly. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, like it doesn't feel like, oh, uh, one instrument stopped and another one started, but it's really woven in really, really well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so hats off to the production because they did it really, really well. Yeah. The arrangement was just great. Yeah. And you mentioned production. So um, the album was produced by David Roback and Rain Parade. So yeah. I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, and also Matt Pucci has told us several times um, that the band's songwriting style, someone would bring in the song and then other people would add to it. So I believe that David brought in the song and then Matt um, helped with pieces. So to have multiple songwriters and have that, that consistency and the way that the song is just strung together so perfectly, is, is, it's amazing with multiple songwriters. So Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you picked a song. Did you follow my lead off track and go right? right <laughs> no, I didn't. It? No, you but didn't. I'm sticking with my one song from each side. Okay, okay. Now, and this song is a personal favorite of mine. So, and I'll tell you why I picked it. So the song I picked is One Hour, One Half Ago. I always want to say one and a half hours ago, but it's one hour, one half ago. Um, it's track four from side one. And I've said before, this is a great listen, tracks one through nine or 10, if you're dealing with <laughs> version. But um, what sealed the deal for me for this pick was hearing this live. Mm. Hearing this live made it jump to the front. Wow. Yes. So uh, a couple of years ago, I hate saying years, but a couple of years ago, Jeff and I and Jeff's lovely wife, Chris, we went up to San Francisco and we saw Rain Parade perform live. Um, And when this song played, I remember, you know, just like you were saying, like I felt that there was, I don't know, something in the air, energy in the air, but I connected with this song more than I had in the past. Oh. So there was just something that snapped. And uh, so I want to talk about it after I have a few things to say, but I do want to share before we play. So um, this is a quote from Scott Miller from his book, Music, What Happened? Okay, 1983, if you're following along in your books. (laughs) But um, as a professor would say, (laughs) yeah. Uh, So he selected for 1983 one of one of his favorite songs or one of the more poignant songs of the year, one hour, one half ago by Rain Parade. And this is what he says. Paisley underground bands were properly from L.A. and one group of core practitioners was the Rain Parade, which contained future Mazzy star members David Roback and Will Glenn. Emergency third rail power trip was probably the most certifiably trippy of the branded projects <laughs> yeah absolutely and so i'm like well scott and i are on the same page so <laughs> one hour one half ago
Love that. Dang. So uh, this song is written by, uh, is credited as being written by both Stephen and David Roback. Um, what I like about this song, and I'm sure our friend Jim from the JFJ Conspiracy uh, podcast <laughs> will, will be upset because it is a four minute, four, 14 <laughs> second song. But it's the varying rhythms. I In my head, I say, this song is like a roller coaster because it goes, you know, it starts out, you know, what's the point? And it's kind of, what's the point of looking back? And so it's kind of fast and then it dips. And then we come back to a second verse. You know, what's the use of anything that brings you down? Can't believe it for an hour. You're in here just a while. And then it goes, Vroom. Yes. And like, so you're just kind of following, right? And you say, I think they're going to go this way. And then they go that way. <laughs> and that's the beauty of this song, right? Is you don't know where it's going to go, but you just know you're going to be taken care of. Um, and I, I love these first two stanza of, of, of lyrics. What's the point of looking back? All you see is an empty track of lives you've lived, lived and things you tried to love. What's the use of anything that brings you down? Can't believe it for an hour. You're in here just a while. And it goes back to that reflecting on life. It's like, you know, we're here for this speck of time. You know, don't look back. Look, look forward. Don't, don't let it bring you down. Wow. It's, uh, this is again this is me i like to analyze lyrics in my head yeah but um i love the pacing the slow fast slow, like they never let me get comfortable i don't settle which is good yes yes and then these guitars like i want to know what pedals are being used on the guitar because to quote michael Curcio, at the end this freak out at the end is just so cool because it's all this distortion and guitars and keyboards and what i love is like it's this con it's like a wave right it's like ah, doom. and then you hear the drums right callus starts going faster and faster and faster at the end and all i'm hearing is d distortion i'm hearing guitars i'm hearing everything and then boom <laughs> like they just stop it and because i wanted it to keep going right yeah it's one of those end jams of a song that i said i never want it to end hmm. but um and then live this song is just ridiculously good because yeah. you just you're there you're in the zone i just love all the experimenting in the pacing the instruments and the sounds in this song and the lyrics i mean you and i have talked before about how matt, matt pucci Stephen Roback and we have to include David Roback. They write good songs. Yeah. So yeah. that was my pick. So I have to say, Soraya, that you, you just mentioning that line, what's the point in anything that brings you down? For me, like just now, as you're right. saying that, it's just wow. Like, I mean, it totally sounds like something like Stephen Roback would write or say, but how profound that is. Um, and you're mentioning, you know, life is only, we're, we're only here for a short period of time. What is the point of anything that brings you down? Why focus on those things that, that are, yeah, I mean, life is too short to deal with that. Right. Anything and then at the, so it's, it's so profound. And then the very last line, right? Things we do are the way we choose to live. Yeah. Mm. Your choice, my choice, we all do it differently. So let's just enjoy the time that we're here. It's pretty profound. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say so you mentioned that the song was written by the Roback brothers. If I'm not mistaken, this is the only song that they recorded that the two of them wrote only together. So, No Easy Way Down from right. Explosions in the Glass Palace was a band written song right. her right. credit for the entire band i think this is the only song that just the two brothers wrote together just the two yeah because i'm i'm looking at the credits and even look at mary has the two brothers but also matt pucci I don't, yeah that's a good point very interesting what i found very interesting too is that one hour one half ago in the credits 
Stephen comes first. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you and I have talked about before, especially with the, I don't want to say illegal, but the unreleased album that you somehow. Import. (laughs) Import. There we go. The the import of that one, of, um, uh, of the one Viva Saturn. Yes. Right? Yes. Unreleased, I'll say unreleased. Yeah, yeah unreleased. Um, you and I talked about how Stephen Roback, not just a really good vocalist, but a very, very strong songwriter. So it's just cool. It's just cool to hear these songs again and just kind of enjoy the lyrics of it. Yes. But great song. So yes, yeah. What do you say we flip to side two? Let's flip it over, Jack. <laughs> now I'm going to take your spot. Okay, okay. So um, I took the lead off track from side two. And it's one of my favorite Rain Parade songs of all time. Okay, and it's what she's done to your mind. So the credit, writing credit, Matt Pucci and David Brobeck. And uh, under three minutes. (laughs) So this is just a strong song. And we've talked about it before as uh, in other contexts. But I just love this song. So what she's done to your mind. jingle jangly goodness yes so birds-esque and uh i love the guitars on this um one thing that we have that i didn't mention before but i have to mention here because it's staring me in the face harmony of these voices yeah. in that chorus it's beauty she she won't let you she yeah. won't let you down. oh <laughs> it's so stinking good and it's just lyrically beautiful and it's just musically beautiful and it just grabs you 
and in two minutes, 56 seconds. Yes. Tells you the whole story. Tells me everything I ever needed to know. And I love, uh, so that chorus to me is just beautiful harmonies and just melodically beautiful. But I, um, I like this, uh, these verses, is your smile made of pain? Kindness is the only way you may say that you're not down. So tell me why, why you're hanging around. And then once again, we get that little extra harmony while you're hanging around. Love this song, love the voice. I love everything about it. And it's such a strong song that it made me wonder. I mean, we do you have the single there? I don't, it's in the okay. room, yeah. Okay, but um, we've talked about the single and um, as, an, as a very early release and- Different version. Go, okay, so side two. But, but when you look at it though, uh, you like to examine track listing and kind of think about that. This was a great start to side two. Great start. Yeah. And it was a way of not letting that early release overshadow newer songs. I, I, I thought it was just interesting that it appears on side two and not side one. Yeah. But I thought, I think, oh, okay, that's a good way. Get, you know, let me hear some new stuff and then let me hear something I know followed by some other new stuff. You interesting. Know? interesting. I don't know. Maybe I'm full of it. No, no. No, <laughs> you never are. <laughs> no, but it's my opinion and I'll yeah. stand by it. And All right, Jeff. So wait, that's wait, mine. Wait, before we move yeah, yeah, on, yeah. Um, I did want to mention real quickly that Matt Pucci has mentioned that the song was about Susanna Hoffs from the Bangles. Yes. Moving on. Um, um, the 12 string, bar. <laughs> 12 string guitar on what she's done to your mind. Oh my gosh. You mentioned earlier. Gorgeous. The birds came up when you were talking about um, that article that you had read, uh, absolutely uh, hear a bird sound. And the tambourine on this, it's just fabulous. It's just, it's just catchy. So we have these, a lot of songs in this album are more downbeat, um, more somber, um, sure. more melancholy. And then you have what she's done to your mind. It's just pop goodness. 257, just below the, the, the <laughs> Jim Strong three minute mark. There perfect, you go. Perfect song. All right, so my last pick, um, and Soraya, you know how much I love Stephen Roback. Absolutely, I do. So um, this is a Stephen Roback song, which ends the American release, Kaleidoscope. And what a great psychedelic title, Kaleidoscope, right? And imagery there. Um, this was one of the two songs that were recorded at Radio Tokyo, um, that studio that my band recorded. And um, so White Glove Test was the band that I was in. And part of the reason why I'm picking Kaleidoscope is this drum track, who isn't Eddie Kawa, by the way, um, says the drums were by Michael Murphy. So this drum track, dun, 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 um, the drummer in my band, White Glove Test, totally caught this drum or was highly influenced by this drum on one of our tracks, Worshiping Boys. So whenever I hear kaleidoscope i think back to my buddy pat monin who was the drummer in white glove test and how, just how much we loved this album when it first came out and what an influence it was so much so that the drum beat um was a direct influence on one of our songs so that's part of the reason why i picked it and it closes out the album so i did a lead off track and the closing so kind of book ending this um back to youtube there was a comment um, I don't know how to say the person's name. It's either Lions L.A. Foray or Lions La Foray. I don't know. Um, but they made this comment on the Kaleidoscope track on YouTube where they said, one of the most delicate songs in the history of rock. Come on. And then there was several people that actually um, that commented or agreed with that. So one of the most delicate songs of in the history of rock. Um, I can't say that I necessarily disagree with that, but it's a huge statement, right? So, I mean, in the history of rock, anything that precedes that, come on, but still, um, Stephen Roback, delicate, of course, right? Um, he just has this feeling to him in his songs, and um, there's not a lot of lyrics in this, but I wanted to read those, um, the imagery in it, and earlier I was talking about um, talking in my sleep, and there was the phrase, I could turn a key, and almost certainly, so there's this turning 
imagery, um, even with the key. Um, and that imagery comes up again um, in the, the, the end bookend of this set, right, with kaleidoscope. So like a kaleidoscope, I turn and I'm turning, right? What I thought was gone is now returning, right? I wonder if it matters as the pattern shifts and shatters. Like a kaleidoscope, revolve and revolving, what I thought was there is now dissolving. I wonder if it matters as the power pattern shifts and shatters. Like a kaleidoscope, I turn and I'm turning. What I thought I knew, I'm just now learning. I wonder if it matters as the pattern shifts and shatters. So I just love that imagery. You know, you're thinking about a kaleidoscope, looking through it, and it's so psychedelic too. And then when you apply it to life, right? And again, there's this imagery of turning. I don't know. I just like that that phrase appears you know, in the lead off track and the closing track, just you, so you're starting off with turning the key, right? Opening something, it, that opportunity is gone. And then you're, you're talking about life. Um, something was gone and now returning. So I don't know. I just like that book ending of the lyrics um, written by different people, right? So this is Stephen Roback. That was Matt and David. So anyways, great song. And uh, I messed up earlier when I was talking about the sitar. So Kaleidoscope is, I think, where Matt's playing sitar. And it's just, again, one of the most delicate songs in the history of rock. Here's Kaleidoscope.
There's that sitar. No, 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 no. Matt Piucci. Oh, man. Yeah, this is a great song. And I think it's a great way to end the album. It, it just lets you off loosely. <laughs> um, it's, it's such a, a great track. And Stephen Roback, just amazing. Um, that little end part, um, freak out, if you will. That, I love that bass part. Um, Stephen did that. That's just great. I just absolutely love this track. And that drum beat always takes me back too. So just like the lead off on talking in my sleep, those, these drums, just great album. And I will say, Soraya, that this is probably my favorite album from the Paisley Underground. So um, 16 Tambourines, probably the most important to me, but this album is just great. And I, I want to mention, I love this album cover. So um, Danny Benair just posted uh, a co the cover for 16 Tambourines and somebody reposted that it shows up on a Facebook group called Shit Album Covers. Somebody yeah. posted 16 Tambourines, which I don't get. I think it's a good cover. Danny doesn't like it either. But anyways, this cover, I think it's fantastic. Um, I love the color colorization on it and it just has a vibe to it. Um, yeah. It's like a horse track or something. Um, some maybe like a fairground or something and all these balloons going up and the colorization on it. No credit is given. I haven't seen any credit on who created this cover, but I just love it. And it doesn't even have the, the title of the album, just as the band name. The title is on the back, not the front and band cover. Love it. Just, it's just an amazing album. And I wanted to mention Soraya that the name of the album, Emergency Third Rail Power Trip, um, I believe comes from some signage on BART, the BART Transit, Bay Area Rapid Transit, right? Is a um, is a transportation what, subway system in mm. the Bay Area. And there's signage for that. And I was looking up the um, BART website and they have a little comment where they, um, it's injury prevention site on, on the BART website. And it says, do not cross the tracks walk on the trackways or touch the electric third rail. So I think, yeah, I've seen pictures that people have posted of the emergency third rail power trip. So it, this third rail must have some electricity going through it. So there must be some shut off the emergency third rail power trip, right? So there must be some breaker just in case something happens, but Soraya, don't touch that third rail. I will not. <laughs> Do not. Although <laughs> the next time we're up in Northern California, I think we have a photo that yeah. needs to be taken. Yeah, yes. that, yeah. And the Glass Palace. Oh. So, yeah. So yeah. we got it. Golden Gate Park. We got to do that. So, yeah. <laughs> if only we could recruit. Yes. Yeah. And Stephen Roback to sit with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could play Will Glenn. I'll be Eddie Kawa. Why not? I don't know if I can get in that Lotus position or whatever. They oh. Are. <laughs> I know I can't. But anyways. <laughs> So okay. Emergency Third Rail Power Trip, amazing album, Beautiful. incredible. Um, there isn't a bad song. And Kitty agrees. Oh, yeah. Uh, my cat decided that this was the time that he wanted to sit closer to the speaker. Yes. So, so you got a rain parade. Fan. Yep. Everybody in your house approves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, so, what a great album. I'm so glad that we uh, took the time to dig into it. Yes. And this if was you a don't lot have it, the Jim Hill remastered get it. CD, yes, on uh, Real Gun, right? Yep. And Real then uh, right. show that beautiful colored vinyl one more time. Oh, I got it. I put it Which away. Which I know this is a, this one is a hard, that's a hard to find because I know that was a limited press. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. limited to a thousand copies and it sold out rather quickly. Very so, quickly. But yeah, it's amazing. So Frank, are you watching? Are you watching this or are you listening? So. Oh, gorgeous. Yeah. So pretty. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. So if you want, if you want looks, get this one. If you want sound, I'll get the other one. <laughs> get, the, get the remastered CD. So there you go. But either way, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Third rail power trip, rain parade. Yeah. Mi gente, agroviar. Groove on, Paisley people.
little stinker album <laughs> the album finished playing you played the credits and he took off I'm like, uh, I, I wanted to be here for the song uh, <laughs> make, I had to make an appearance damn <laughs> I love it damn. I've been lucky but anyhow I love it oh my Oh, yeah. 